Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Beholder Blissful Sleep. Yes, the DLC dropped. As you know, I've played the original game, the main game, a little bit ago, and I said the reason why I was doing it is because Blissful Sleep was on the way, and yesterday it released. So, let's jump right in. Uh, I have not yet played the game. I'm going to go train you again, just so... Because this is obviously more fun to play, because it's more challenging, but you probably want to see the story, right? So in case you don't know, in this DLC we are playing the person who was before Karlstein. The one who was beat up in the intro of the original one. So, let's see. Dear Hector Medina, congratulations on your 85th birthday. 85 is a grand age, worthy of honor and respect. You served your great country well, and now it's your country's turn to serve you. You must come to the Euthanasia Center in 14 days to undergo the blissful sleep procedure. In the meantime, please put your affairs in order. Excuse me, I'm not 85 yet. This is a mistake. There is no mistake. The documents are signed and the voucher for the Euthanasia Center has been issued. The order of your transfer from your current workplace to the blissful sleep waiting list goes into effect today. Thank you for your service. Have a good day. Wait a minute. This is impossible. In fact, I... The line goes there. So... Basically, we've been uh, chosen to be euthanized. Oh. I pick up the phone. Ministry of Information. As part of the Population Genetic Purity Program, you must collect a DNA sample from every tenant in your building. Inspect each apartment and find items that contain suitable uh, hair, saliva, blood, skin. A courier will come by in a few days to collect everything you need. What's the net genetic purity program? The Ministry of Auto authorized the net genetic purity program a week ago. The purpose of the program is to identify citizens who are prone to betray the motherland as a at a genetic level. Okay, good to know. Hello, Jean. Let's say hello to you. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Hector Medina. I'm the manager of this building. My name's Jean Ern. Do you know George de Latour? Yes, I sometimes model for him, but for some reason he thinks I'm his muse. You do inspire him. I find those kinds of compliments strange. I'm not used to hearing things like that. Still, I'm glad for the opportunity to earn some money, and George is a gentleman. He's made an untoward advances or asked me to do. See, the thing I'm wondering is why are they getting a company just now? Like, he, I've been the building manager for a while, right? Um, let's talk about her life. Tell me about yourself. Why are you interested in me? Uh, let's give this a moment. I'll come back to it. Jacob Menashek, we know him. Hello, Hector, do you want something? I'm just saying hi. Thanks, do you know if there is a good toy store in the city? Marcus' birthday is coming up and all they have on the general store are the wooden toys. He really wants a rocket. I'm afraid we don't have any rockets. Oh well, I guess I'll go back to the general store and pick something else. You know, Jacob, they say wooden toys are safe. They're made of all natural materials and they don't contain allergens. All natural materials? Yeah, right. Last winter, buddy of mine ran out of coal and started to get cold. He had to use any foil he could, even furniture. Despite their son's tears, they had to burn his wooden horse too. 
that house burned for eight days. Can you imagine that? <laughs> eight days in Sevon? That sounds like a holiday miracle. Huh. A chemist, I assure you, that sounds like a devilish construction of paraffin. That all's healthy for kids. Well, it sounds like those wooden horses could come in handy in the winter. <laughs> Perhaps you're right. Uh, let's talk to him about euthanasia. Have you heard of the blissful sleep? Yes. Don't tell anyone, but I think it's pure madness. Do you think it's painful? It should be. Just imagine a man spends his life slaving away for his people and state, and instead of well deserved respect and retirement, he gets shot up with poison. Besides, given how they deal with things, I doubt they have any decent medication left. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that instead of a fast and penis it takes old people hours to die in agony. Oh my Hector, I'm sorry I heard about your birthday, but it didn't compute. All the news on the TV seems to be about things that are happening far away, things that don't concern us or our loved ones. I wish I could help you, but how? It's okay, Jay, but I'll deal with it. What do you think about the weather? What weather, Hector? Look outside, it's nice and grey, like it always is. That goddamn smoke from the factory won't let any sunlight through. The cold just isn't tall by either. Okay. Close Shimmer, he was a good guy. We did. We, we sold him out last time. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Close. Hello, Close. How are you? Fine, how are you? I wish I could say happy birthday, Hector, but given the latest news, you simply have my deepest condolences. I never would have guessed you were 85. You look much younger. The problem, Close, is that I'm not even 65. What? But how was I wrong? You're in the wrong class, the ministry is. Oh, so they'll fix the records and you'll have plenty of time before having to visit the horrible euthanasia center. Who knows, maybe we won't even be around in a few years. I'm sure this is a temporary measure. There's nothing more permanent in our world than temporary solutions. <laughs> I love that sentence. That sentence right there got me. The Ministry of Care called. They think their records are correct. And even if they realized they made a mistake, no one would admit it. Well, but don't we have someone living up here who's um, working in the archives? Maybe you could help, because the great state and the wise leader don't err. My god, Hector, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it, it's my life and my problem. You've got enough on your plate. All we can do is pray nobody in the ministry spills coffee on the records that shows your age, or the age of your children. Uh, we just did this... I'm going to ask everything. <laughs> I know this building used to belong to your family. What was it like? It didn't just belong to my family. My great-grandfather and his son built it. It was so beautiful in its prime. I remember orange trees blooming in the orchard. Alas, there's nothing left of its former beauty. The ministry long ago turned the orchards into tarmac. How's the working? Yes, yeah, and a good one at that. I loved numbers since I was a kid. It was the perfect job for me. Though I sometimes catch myself thinking that people are skeptical about it, statical data I compile. What do you mean? Did you know, Hector, that for each newborn four soldiers are killed in action? Or that our economy is based on the support of the ministry and satellite service jobs? These people produce nothing but new laws and directives. I say this, even though I myself am employed by the ministry. Oh, how about this? 30% of our workforce is in jail, and another 10% is busy guarding those jails. Close. There was a time when I'd just nod and go record that information, but now I don't think it'd be around for more than a couple of weeks, so let me give you some advice. Never share that information with anyone. If you do, they'll come for you. Yeah, we know they do eventually. Oh my, I didn't realize. You've heard enough. I understand. You've he heard enough. I understand. Uh, keep it to yourself and everything will be fine. Eh, I think there's one more thing to ask. How's the family? As I know, my wife's name is Maria. She's a literature teacher. Our daughter's Lata is six. We've already looked for a school for her. That's it? But you're too old for having a six-year-old daughter, right? That said, the ministry might implement mandatory allocations, which means she'll probably go to the nearest school of patriotic upbringing. I don't have any other family. At least no one who's not in jail. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm an economist at the Ministry of Finance. I have access to retired uh, statistics. It's been noted recently that every citizen has a relative who's in jail <laughs> or in a labor camp. By the way, the department that made the discovery was disbanded and everyone went to jail except for the supervisor. I think he's related to someone important. And you, Hector, do you have any family? Yeah, I have an adult son, but he lives far away. He's helping to build a railroad. It takes six months for mail to reach him, provided he doesn't get lost along the way. I don't get to hear from him as much. But at least he's alive and not in jail. I'm glad for that. Also, I apparently have a cat. Ooh, there's a child. Let's, let's raid her out to the government. 
Hi, Margot. How are you? Hi, Hector. I'm fine. Good boy. Seen anything suspicious lately? Like what? Like enemy spies or criminals or aliens? Aliens? That sounds fiction and science fiction is banned. Or a small boy. Stay aware. I'm more aware than anyone. What do you want? Oh, great idea. Let's build a sandbox. They're cool and everyone should play in whenever they want. I could play in a sandbox forever. They're the best thing ever. Unfortunately, Marcos, it would be near impossible to build a sandbox. All of that sand will mine is used to build new apartment buildings. I doubt it could get any. But everyone needs a sandbox. Kids, grown-ups, everyone, even your cat would love it. Yeah, she actually should probably have one. I mean, where is she going if there's no sand? Um, ooh, neighbor's girl. You're interested, huh? You, you, you going all jiggler? Close to puberty yet? Do you know Slat and Apartment 1? Yeah, she's awesome. We played ball the other day. She had a good time. We're a lot alike. We even like the same things. We both like the sandbox idea. Could you somehow make it happen? I'm sorry, but no. Ooh. Oh, there's Maria Shimmer. We also s No, we sorted your husband. I think we didn't sell you out. Hello. Oh, Maria, you look great. Oh, thank you, and happy birthday, by the way. Well, thanks. Have you seen the news? Thanks. Although, between work, chores, at home, and taking care of my kid, I don't have time to celebrate. I barely have time to watch Patriots Cry 2 on TV. Lucky you. I hope the war will be over soon. Yeah, we know it won't be because we didn't sell the nuclear weapons to... Uh, that other country. Tell me about your family. Klaus and I met at a charity reception hosted by the Ministry of Finance to support our soldiers. I brought the best students from our school to receive patriotic poems. Klaus helped me arrange everything. After that, we spent the whole night talking about literature. It was like in the movies. Sparks were flying. Oh, it was light. That sounds romantic. It was beautiful. I knew he'd make me happy. He's such a sensitive person. Only my daughter's birth was as important to me as meeting Klaus. We tried for years to have a baby, but couldn't. We're desperate and clung to our latest hope. Treatment involved. Back then, he could still leave the country legally. Klaus obtained permission, though his, through his connection at the ministry. I'm glad it worked out. A child can brighten and color his home. I felt that way when my son was born. Do you ever talk to him? Eh, he lives too far away. The letters I find, uh, I sent him get lost on the way. What a shame. Um... Personally, right now, they're a bit heavy on the whole dystopia thing. Um, I preferred it in the original, where it kind of tickled in. Like, you didn't have a hundred thousand people in the beginning just telling you how everything's complete garbage. And here, you literally wake up, go to people, and everyone just goes like, yeah, everything's shit. So, hello, Josh. How's your job? How could you call this a job? I'm wasting my life on this drivel. Are you painting propaganda again? Yes, it's not exactly what I dreamt I'd be doing as I studied the works at the great artist and as I developed and nurtured my gift. I'm beginning to doubt I even have a gift. I used to be sure I could create something brilliant. And now do I still have it in me? Only Malpomini knows. I'm sure this job is temporary. You'll have a chance to show the world your town somehow, George. While I, George Latour, agonize in anticipation of that favorable time, any narrow-minded gendarme can drag me through the mud with a kick at the jackaboo. The chastity of their ardent soul is at risk of dying. Oh my god, you're one pretentious motherfucker, aren't you? Bind of unscrupulous obscenity. I'm afraid I no longer understand what we're talking about. Like the fates weave the web of human history, the people weave the thread of their conversation, not knowing where it will go. Yeah, I know I kind of want to go get away from you. I'm not going to talk to him about creativity. That's just going to be him spouting shitty words. Who is that woman who's visiting you? You saw her? Of course you did. Who wouldn't notice a goddess like her? <laughs> She's my beauty model genre, and this entrance has stolen my heart, Hector. That's her, right? She was Jean All of my thoughts are focused on her, although she hasn't warmed up to me yet. Each obstacle makes me love that much stronger. We have <laughs> Louise Manichek. <laughs> <laughs> I've been better. Uh, yeah, he... <laughs> I have a bottle of imported wine. I'd feel much better. Oh, no, 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 no. The ministry has bad imported wine. We don't break any laws. Sorry, that's not my best joke. Believe me, I'm on my side. I hardly drink at all. I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never trust a man who don't drink, right? My question is, Maria Routine, where do you work? I don't work. I'm on leave of absence due to my health. I stay home and take care of my son. It's too bad. 
the kindergartens are closed. Marcus gets bored from time to time. Does he play with the neighbor girl? With letter, yes. They get along like two peas in a pod. I like her. She's well bred and always polite. So pretty Marcus doesn't have a sister. They'd have fun together. I'd have more fun too. Oh, so she wants a daughter. Let's talk to... Wait, we already talked, right? Yeah. Let's go to the courier. Oh no, that's the guy I need to give the stuff to, right? So how will we go up here? Oh. Bet they get. Come here, kitty. I've had a rough day too. They didn't spend my day on my side scratching the chair. <laughs> Obviously, you've been much busier than me. Meow. Yeah, you, you cheat that cat nicely. Hi, kiddo. Hi, Uncle Hector. Can I play with your kitty? It's so cute. Do you have candy? I don't have any candy, but you can play with my cat. He's old, so you have to be gentle. He's old? So he will get the blissful sleep treatment soon. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> I'll be very gentle. They said on TV that the elderly should be led with kind persistence to that big building. I pretend our house is a huge palace. Don't kill my cat! Uh, what kind of games do you play? I'm sad mommy and daddy had a fight. Don't worry, don't make up. Really? Good, because I don't feel like telling my kindergarten teacher about their fight. I don't want to do that at all. Yeah, don't tell her. They'll get probably put down or something. Um, What do you want? Can you build us a sandbox, one for unlimited toys and real shovels for digging up Trevor and edible sand? With a real shelter below it, one with a wise leader in it? And with your cat not going there? I'm sorry, Slato, so but I'm not planning on building a sandbox. Why not? The building is born without a sandbox. Oh my god, stop bringing up the freaking sandbox. And think of all the things we could do. He doesn't have the resources. Oh, what a good uh, kind of... I'm sorry I feel that way. Not as sorry as you are about not having a sandbox, our parents pay taxes, so you have to listen to us. Girl, I always thought in these totalitarian states people were, would bring up their kids better. Uh, who's your friend? Mark is our neighbor, he's fun and nice, and we were born on the same day. We play games, we play Firefighter yesterday. I don't think there's important information here, and I'm done talking about sandboxes. So. <laughs> Okay, we know what the blissful sleep is. You can pause and read it. Um, I'm gonna really read the voice of truth about this. This day marks the beginning of the end of our country. What is the life of an ordinary citizen like? He works from dawn to dusk to provide for his family, dragging himself along the dirty streets at night. After a long and odious shift, he dreams of the day he can retire and trade his ex exhausting labors for some well-deserved rest and relaxation. All people are tired and have no strength for the struggle for life. There have been worries since high school when they were forced to study volume after volume of meaningless memoirs written by our so-called great leader. Our citizens are deprived of their last hope, peaceful twilight years. What's next? Compository reproduction in order to build more industrial premises and make it more menus? People either wake up or slumber or go... Okay. Wait, that's yet another... No, that's Marcus Munchak. Okay. I'm just gonna talk to the courier if there's something to say. I mean, if you bring stuff I need. Okay, so I'm assuming this works. Yeah, it works exactly the same way. I'm gonna be buying a lot of these for now. Um, let's just see if someone's somewhere and. I'll knock. Okay. No one's there. Oh, she's coming now. Well, we know there's someone here who wants something from us, but I'm more into installing cameras at this point. I mean, I do have a decent amount of time. I think there's someone in there. I'm gonna knock. I think there's someone in there. I'm not entirely sure. No? Okay, then we'll go in. I'm actually gonna start off with installing the cameras just because I can because it helps me know about that. I'm gonna check on the government directive in a second. I wanna get this done first. There's more cameras in this than in the original. I'm pretty sure there was two or three here and now I need four. So something to keep in mind. 
Is that this person? I'm not sure who this. Oh no, it's the cat. Okay. So the person must come here. So I have a tiny bit of time. Is that it? I know Claw Shimmer is not in there, so it must be somewhere else. Can't that? Don't I need to steal that because I need to give the DNA thing? Up, 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 up. What's happening here? Provide the canned food. Are you hungry for the ball? Here's your food. Meow. Okay. Uh, fancy meeting you here. Uh, what do you want, mate? What is it, George? Like a wild beast, I can't tell you my troubled thoughts about the miserable fortune we all face. Could you just tell me about your problem in plain English? Do you know what unrequisited love is, Hector? I know what it's like to lose a beloved wife, George. I believe that's more than enough to allow me to understand you. Jean doesn't love me, and I want more than anything else in the world her to love me as passionately as I do. I've submit nothing to achieve this goal. I'm desperate to the point of being willing to try a love potion. Is such if such a potion worked, would it not be a deceit? Would you conceive not smite you? Find a w way to make Jean fall in love with me, Hector. I'll give up everything for her love. My honor, my soul, even my conscience. I don't think I can help you. But you never know. I'll ask around. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think I want to get involved in that. I don't feel like that's a good thing to do. Oh, well, that's the trailer. Do you sell sandboxes by any chance? Um, what do you want, Claus? I would like... I would like to mere request, if I may. Go ahead. Slater will soon turn six. I'd like to throw a party. Ever since she saw the fireworks on the day of world happiness, she won't stop talking about seeing more. Can you acquire more for me? I'll see what I can do. So, fireworks. Let's just see if they sell it. Oh, Rannick. We I still know you. You were the... Archivist. Good afternoon, Mark. What's good about it? It could be better. R my rheumatism hasn't flared up. That's because you live in the basement. Dampness and cold are a curse to your age. My age? I'm younger than you. Really? I got into my documents. I'm 20 years younger than you. Okay, so I'm actually the same age because apparently I'm 20 years wrong. But, but how is that possible? You look much older. Is that what you want to say? As a honorary archive worker, I can say it doesn't matter how young or old a person looks. So I can use you to make me younger. What matters is what's written in the documents, and I do know how to work them. <laughs> He's my... I thought he was my ticket. Um, what do you think about the wall? Have you heard any news from the battlefield? Of course. Our troops strike, the enemy drawbacks, and vice versa. Do you think the wall is still lower? That's none of our business. Our job is to sit in the archives and sort our files. I don't care. He's always so businesslike, but he just told me on the very first sentence that he's f falsifying his document. Uh, it's doing death certificates. It's all the same to me. We better just sit still and be happy they don't haul us off because of our age. Have you heard about the blissful sleep? I have. What do you think about it? Rose and I have a lot of time left before we have to go. Moreover, the law could be changed at any moment. Oh, who knows? Our documents might get lost in the archives. My wife and I are diligent citizens and are preparing for it just in case. We've already written our wills. By the time they say the Ministry of Beforehand Applications will be open soon. One, one can earn extra food cards for doing a going early. Do they think people would go to the euthanasia center early in exchange for food? I've seen people do all kinds of things for food. Um, can't I ask him to also change my stuff? Uh, weather, I guess. Well, doesn't change the summer. Who cares about the weather, Hector? It's the same year round. You should be used to it by now. Um, haha, I'm just joking. What do you want to hear, Hector? That everything is stable and our country is racing towards a better tomorrow? Don't you read the newspapers? I'm in no newspaper mood. Understand. I make cigarettes out of them. Be careful, Mark. If you do anything with a newspaper besides read it, leave our country, our leader's photo untouched. Otherwise, you'll be given the full measurement of justice for disrespecting the entire state and the rule of law. You're a smart aleck, huh? Yeah, I am quite the asshole, aren't I? 
Um, we are at 25 minutes. I feel like this is a decent moment to just make a quick cut and I will see you in the second episode, I hope, which will hopefully include way more gameplay and a little bit less talky-talky. I know this has been an extremely talky episode. Um, I hope it picks up because right now I can see if you say, hey, you've just been talking to people and there for 25 minutes and it's 25 minutes of just people going, eh, everything's terrible. I get that. That's... I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this was a particularly strong entry into the DLC. The main game handled it way better, but I'm sure it will pick up. And I will see you in the second episode for some actual gameplay. Have a great one, bye bye.